Today we are taking a look at how I drew cat eyes using coloured pencils and also a solvent. So if this is something that you would like to learn how to do then carry on watching. So let's start with the sketch. So it's really important before you start any drawing to just have an accurate sketch of whatever it is that you are drawing. And I also like to include some little extra details in the sketch, such as some of that fur texture. I then like to lighten up the sketch before I even begin the drawing process. And this is just to make sure that we get rid of any dark lines or pencil strokes that will show through that coloured pencil. Just a little disclaimer though, I did use the wrong paper for this tutorial, so I've now made sure that I'm using a much thicker and better paper for my solvent drawings. What I like to do first is use a very sharp black pencil and I'm using the black polychromos pencil because it is so intense and it's just great for those darkest areas. I use a sharp pencil as well to really make sure that I can neatly sketch out the pupil and the shape of the cat's eye as well. So a sharp pencil just means that I can be really precise and detailed. Once I've got the main shape of the cat's eye in, it's time to start shading some colours into the eye. So I'm doing one eye at a time and what I like to do is just build up on all of the tones and hues in the eyes in layers. So I'm starting with the cream and I'm shading the cream across the whole surface area of the eye. So I'm shading because I'm using a solvent. So the solvent is going to eliminate all of that paper grain once we go in and just blend everything everything out. Then I build up on the cream using lots of different colours. So this cat had very rich and intense coloured eyes with a lot of yellow, oranges and red tones in the eyes. So they were quite a deep and rich, fiery looking eye. So I just wanted to make sure that I really captured all of the different tones in the eye. I like to also shade in some more earthy tones like browns and greens to just tone down some of the more vibrant tones in the eye and just give them a more natural glow. So it's all about just building up that depth and dimension and building up enough layers so that I can blend with the solvent. So you need to make sure that you have enough pencil down to the paper for the solvent to work. So if you don't have enough, it's not going to blend well and you're still going to get that really grainy feel. So if you also have too much pencil down, then you're going to have a very similar problem as well because there'll be no white grain for that solvent to absorb into. So you need to make sure that you do get that right balance to allow the solvent to do its magic. After a few layers of pencil you should start to see all of the tones and hues really coming together and the saturation should be really bringing that area to life and just defining all of those shadows and highlights in the eye. It doesn't matter if your drawing looks grainy at this stage, like I said when you apply that solvent all of the graininess is just going to magically disappear and all of the harsh lines will be blended out to create that really smooth and glossy transition of colours. Moving on to the second eye now and just applying exactly the same techniques and processes to the first eye. So what I did was again just gently mark out the pupil and the shape of the eye using the black polychromos and then I just got to work on the eye. So again I started with that cream and I shaded in a couple of light layers of the pencil and then just gradually built up all the layers adding in lots of other colours and tones to the eye. So I started with the cream because it's a fairly light colour and I just make sure that when I add more colours to the eye I still keep some areas of that cream and the lighter tones showing through just to preserve those highlights and lightest parts in the eye. Eyes have a lot of hues in them, a lot of flexes and details, so it's really important just to make sure that you do identify all of these little features before you go in with a solvent. So I've really made sure to just take my time in building up all of the tones in the eyes, all of the colours and identify the shadows and highlights in the eyes. So when I apply my solvent I don't lose any important details in the drawing. Finally I make sure that I add in some very deep and dark values into the eye using the dark sepia pencil and this just intensifies the shadows even more. 
and when I apply the solvent you're going to see exactly how intense and dark those shadows will become. Next I'm working on the fur and what I like to do is just make sure that I get in the general shape and direction of the fur, the fur clumps, colours in the fur and I identify where the light sources are and where the shadows are. My techniques are to work gradually and slowly build up all of that tonality in the fur just by building on those layers. So again, very similar techniques to the eyes. I'll start with those light tones and then emphasize the fur texture just by applying some mid and dark tones. So right now it is looking very sketchy at this stage but once I apply that solvent it will smooth out the areas but it will also just clearly establish the light and dark areas of the fur, the direction, shape and length of the fur so it just simplifies the whole rendering process when it comes to using those coloured pencils. Now it's time to let that solvent do its magic. So as I said, I'm using the Zestit Pencil Blend, which is my absolute favourite solvent to use. I use this one as it has a very citrusy odour to it, and I personally prefer this smell to a paint thinner. And I'm also using a couple of paint brushes alongside the solvent. So firstly, I do like to give a little safety warning in my videos when I'm using any potentially harmful substances or objects. So you will need to ventilate your room properly when you are using a solvent so just make sure that you do open a door or window when you're using a solvent to allow for a fresh airflow. For the paint brushes I am using three different sizes so I'm using the De La Rowney Sable Rounded Brush Head in a size 20, a De La Rowney Aquafine paintbrush in a size 7 and a small detailed brush which is a size 4 and I'm just using different size brushes for the different areas on the cat. I then carefully start to blend out all of the areas of coloured pencil and I'm just starting with the eyes first because I find this the easiest and I'll explain some of my techniques for blending. So for small details such as the pupil I do like a more detailed brush so for those areas I'm using the size 4 detailed brush so I can be really precise with the blending. I don't want the pupil to smudge too much into the surrounding areas so I'm using a small paintbrush which is best so I have more control. For the main part of the iris I'm using the Aquafine paintbrush which is a size 7 so this brush is a bit bigger than the size 4 and it just means that I can blend a larger area of the eye but it's still fairly small so that I can contain the blending within the eye. Then for the fur I am using two brushes so I'm using the size 7 Aquafine paintbrush again but I'm also using the Sable rounded brush head in the size 20 so that brush is a bit bigger and it's just great for blending out larger areas such as the main part of the fur. When I am blending I like to work with all of the layers and textures I have built with the coloured pencil. So with the fur I blend in the direction of the fur growth and the shape of the cat's face. For the under eye section I'm blending the fur outwards and above the eye the fur is being blended up and outwards. So this is just to keep that general shape and direction of the fur. I use circular motions for blending out the solvent and I just find circular motions are the best way to blend out the solvent because it really gets rid of any paper grain and any stubborn lines. I also use quite a bit of solvent for that first initial layer so normally when I use a solvent I just use a solvent once and then I'll render the area with coloured pencils but if you are going to use the solvent more than once in a piece you can be quite generous for the first layer but just make sure that you reduce the amount of solvent you use for each layer after that. It's also really important that you don't douse or soak your paper in solvent so I use a paper towel or kitchen roll just to soak up any excess solvent before I blend the coloured pencil out and this is just to make sure that the paper doesn't get too wet or damaged. 
I will then wait at least 20 to 30 minutes for the solvent to dry. So it really depends on how much solvent you used for blending, how thick your paper is and the paper texture to really determine how long you need to wait before going back in with your coloured pencils. What I do is I go back in with those coloured pencils and what you should find is that those coloured pencils just lay so well over the solvent. So the solvent is there sort of for that base and to provide all that tone and all the values and then it's just about rendering everything so I really just do the same processes as I did before I used the solvent so again I'm just using that cream and just building up on all of the tones in the eye again so the cat's eyes were very glossy and glassy so I want a subtle transition and blend of colors just to make them really stand out so if you look at the eye that I've just rendered compared to the other eye, it just really stands out. And I just find that the solvent just really helps to cover the paper grain so that when I do go in with the coloured pencils, there's already that value there. There's already all those hues. It's just more about just making those adjustments just to make them even more intense. I'm also using really sharp pencils now because I'm getting in all of those details in the eye and sharp pencils will really help you just to get those precise details and render everything. I also love using a solvent because once it's dry it's so easy to go back over like I said and just add in more coloured pencils. So say you made a mistake you can easily rectify that with the coloured pencils afterwards and just tweak certain areas. It's also really good because if you wanted to add in highlights or really light areas you can do that with a solvent so like with the highlights in the eye it's so easy to go back in those areas with a white pencil whereas if you were doing the layering and burnishing techniques it's going to be so much harder to do that so as I said, the one mistake that I did make is that I used the wrong paper. So I used a cheaper paper for this tutorial and um, I noticed that the solvent didn't blend as well as I'd hoped. I could definitely have used paper with a lot more grain and thickness to it and as I said I'm using better paper now so I'm now using a, a hot press watercolour paper which is the Fabriano Artistico hot pressed paper and also Arches hot press paper is a really good option as well. So it's really important to use paper that is the right texture and the right thickness so make sure that you do go for a hot pressed paper because although it is fairly smooth it still does have enough tooth to be able to absorb that solvent and the watercolour paper is used for wet mediums anyway. So now that I'm working on the second eye, I'm really just following the same steps I took to render that first eye. So I'm just increasing the colouring in the eye, the saturation, contrast, light and dark tones in the eye as well, just to make sure it has enough depth and dimension. As a last step, I also like to pick up some of those fine little details. So for example, the flexes and veins in the eye. And to do this, I use a really sharp pencil just to get in that detailing and all of those highlights. When I feel that the eyes are nice and rendered, I'll start working on the fur around the eyes and I'll really work with all the texture and tone the solvent has given me. However, like I said, the paper has definitely caused some issues because the fur still looks pretty pasty and very grainy looking. But never mind, it still provided me with something to work from, so I just start by refining the fur directly above and under the eye and then I work my way across the rest of the face and then the other eye. I have a method of working on one side first and then the other side and that is just because using a solvent can cause a lot of smudging so if I work from left to right I just find it limits the amount of smudging I get on the paper plus I'm right handed so it just makes more sense to go from left to right. So I start by rendering all of the fur on the left hand side and I'll use all the layers of the solvent I created as a base and just build on that. So I'll look at where the dark clumps of fur are, where the lighter clumps of fur is, what colours and tones are in the fur and then I work on one section of fur at a time. I'll build up a lot of tone and layers to the fur and I'll make sure that I have that transition from the lightest to darkest parts of the fur and I'll also create the fur details by pulling up some highlights and dark sections of fur. 
to pull up the highlighted parts of the fur, I am using the white luminance pencil and the ivory from the polychromos and I'm also using the dark sepia and the burnt sienna for those darker sections of fur. For the centre of the cat's face, I'm making sure that I allow those lighter tones that we blended with the solvent to show through the fur because the fur is a lot more sparser in this area. So I'm actually using the Pompeian Red just to create some little fur texture. I'm using a really sharp pencil for this and to create the short fur I just use short and quick pencil strokes and then I leave some space for the sparser fur and then clump some of those pencil strokes more closer together to build up the fur texture and the thicker fur growth as well. This just makes for that natural and realistic fur and to create even more realistic detailing in the fur I'll use a white pencil to create more specific details and just to really make the fur pop. So just skipping forward a little bit now I'm now working on the final section of the ginger fur and again I'm just really applying the same techniques that I have done for the whole of the fur. So I use the Pompeian red and the scarlet red to mark out some of those fur details and then I build up on all of the fur texture in between the fur clumps using the cream and all of the gingery and brown tones to create that soft natural ginger fur. So we are now coming to the end of this tutorial now and as always I really hope you enjoyed this one and picked up lots of helpful tips on how to draw a close up study using solvent. If you are new around here then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you never miss an update from me. I also have the full 4 hour plus tutorial video for this over on Patreon. That video has a full narration, so a full voiceover from start to finish over on Patreon. So I have left a link to my Patreon in the description box down below. If you would like to check that out, go and click on that link and it will take you to my Patreon page. I will be back very soon with a brand new video, so make sure that you look out for that. And as always, I really hope that I'll see you all soon. Bye guys.